Welcome, in this video we're talking how to configure WPA2 Enterprise on a wireless LAN using the WLC. So the big thing is with WPA2 Enterprise, we're going to be setting up a radius server and verifying port connectivity. So let's go ahead and let's get into configuration. So basic setup like we've had previous labs, except now we have two switches and a few more access points. Access points have already been configured with those IP addresses. All of them have the WLC uh, programmed into them, have the uh, default gateway. Again, all of these, when they power it on, communicate with the WLC controller, so the controller should know about all of them. So let's go ahead and let's hop on our admin PC, get to our desktop, get to our web browser, and browse to the WLC controller. Again, this is going to take a minute when it first connects, it just kind of is what it is. Normally, in this type of environment, I'd be setting wireless to its own VLAN. However, within the scope of what we've been discussing, this is outside the scope of the exam. So I did want to point that out. Go ahead and get basic items configured. So the server name, management IP, subnet mask, default gateway, management VLAN 1. So here we're going to call it uh, corp. Security is going to be enterprise. Authentication server is going to be the management server 172.16.0.2. One seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot two. Let's go ahead and set up a author, uh, authentication server shared secret. Management VLAN is fine. Notice it's not prompting us for a pre shared key because we're going to be using WPA2 Enterprise. Not setting up a virtual IP apply and it just it's going to restart and it's going to take a minute so I'm going to pause while it does that. All right, so that should be more long enough. Again, it's now requiring the HTTPS for connection. So, before I go too far into this, I want to point out within the management, we need to set up management for radius. Radius is AAA services, and it's this guy right here. So we need to turn it on. We need to say what client is going to be using this, a WLC. The client IP address. It's 172.16.0.10. Server, or the uh, secret is going to be whatever was set. I just did password. And that will let us send information between the WLC and our radius server. Make sure it's turned on. All right, so back to our PCA. Go ahead and get logged in. So uh, first thing we want to do is make sure that DHCP is functioning. So let's go ahead and go to wireless lands. That should be fine. Let's go to monitor. Again, that's all information there. Wireless lands we've already done. Controller. We want to set up our DHCP, so we'll go to interfaces. Go to management. Make sure that we set up our primary DHCP server, 172.16.0.2. Again, that is the IP address of our management server, which is .2. So that should be good. Let's hop over to security. And again, we have port 882. A big thing is pay attention to the port. Whatever the port number is, 
we need to make sure that in our AAA management that we update that radius port to use the correct port number. So there we have it. I'm going to double check our access points to make sure it sees our three access points. Uh, apparently it is not using our WPA2. Set up our for encryption. Not pre-shared key, that's fine. AAA server. We're not setting up a uh, accounting server at this moment. We're not setting up LDAP. We're gonna double check our AP groups. The default group should be the only one that we have. I actually wanted to view the groups, but okay. Never mind. I'll just go to monitor. I want to make sure that we can see all three access points. And yes, we can. So we have three access points that are up and running. They're all part of that access group. Addresses are appropriate. Some are powered via PoE. Some of them are powered via power brick. So let's go ahead and let's see if this works. Again, for management, I have user A and user B with two separate passwords. Packet Tracer is a little bit buggy, so in order to go to our wireless, we can't just click on our wireless because it has a default profile that uh, is already set for us. So we can actually edit the default profile. If this is not pop populating, let's double check that our access points are broadcasting corp. And they are. So that's kind of a bug in Packet Tracer. So I'll just go to the config option, go to wireless, and kind of make the window a little bit bigger. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to edit some of these settings. So Corp, I am using WPA2, not WPA2 pre-shared key, but just WPA2, that means enterprise. Username is user A, password one. Turn it back on. And we're going to see if it grabs an address. Okay, and it did grab an address. It just, it took uh, a few minutes. So it wasn't an immediate connection. So it does function. It just is not always the fastest. So again, configure, go to wireless. I'm going to turn it off. I'm changing this to corp. I'm doing WPA2, setting up user B, setting up the new password, turning it on. And there we go. The weird part is they're associating with our first access point, not the other ones, even though the other ones are closer. Not quite sure why that is, but they are all sending uh, access to Corp. So that is how we do basic WPA2 enterprise connection in a nutshell. The big thing is when we do this, we need to make sure to set up our AAA service. The big thing is making sure the radius port is the same because that's how the WLC, the access points, and the management server are going to connect. So it needs to be able to say to use this port 
so that the clients know how to send the appropriate information. Without that radius port being updated, user A and user B would not have been able to connect to the access point. Again, this is a basic overview of how to do a basic setup of a radius server on integrating with WPA2 Enterprise on a basic wireless LAN. If you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.